Hello, everybody, and welcome to Iceberg To Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcast from by simply searching Tip of the Iceberg. Kyle Dubas remains publicly silent on whether or not he will buy or sell at the NHL's trade deadline on March 8th. There's a chance that this entire episode is null and void if he decides that he is going to either sell or stand pat at the the deadline, excuse me. But I wanted to look for a few names that the Penguins could realistically go after before that deadline comes on March 8th. A couple of names that I think would fit with what the Pittsburgh Penguins currently need on their roster. And there are an abundance of needs. Let me say that first and foremost. But I feel like defense is probably the only one that would be addressed at the trade deadline. They have a few triggers left to pull at forward. Riley Smith needs to return from injury. And the sense that I'm getting from just an outsider's perspective is that they're obviously hoping that Riley Smith comes back and performs closer to what we saw from him at the early portion of the season. So they still need to see what happens with that. Matt Nieto, I understand a lot of people weren't happy with the signing. A lot of people weren't happy with the early season production. And he's currently injured. They still have that return at some point this season that they have in their back pocket. Not to mention players like Sam Poulan and Yesapul Yarvi, who are earning at the very least an opportunity at the NHL level, currently playing with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. So there's a lot of triggers left to pull for the Penguins from the forward side of things. Meanwhile, on the defensive side, P.O. Joseph continues to sputter around. Chad Ruedel really hasn't solidified a spot. Ryan Shea hasn't surprised me at all, hasn't really impressed me at all to this point of the season. He seems like a ninth, 10th option, which is what he's turned into this season for the Penguins. And John Ludwig, while I do like him and I do think is the best of those four options is having an injury-riddled season. When he comes back, I think he goes in the lineup, but I think the Penguins, if they're going to make an addition at the trade deadline, which if they do, it's not going to be a huge addition, and that's going to be reflected in my top three trade targets that I talk about here in a second. But if they make an addition, I see it coming from the back end. A couple weeks ago, about a month ago at this point, Elliot Friedman reported that Kyle Dubas was dipping his toe into the water looking for defensemen around the National Hockey League. And if you watch the Penguins, it seems like that's where, if they're going to make a move, it's going to be. Because as I've talked about multiple times, as many people have talked about multiple times, there's a chance that they don't go out there and buy. They don't have very many assets that they can afford to go out and buy. Not to mention the fact that there's still the slim chance, in my opinion, that they end up selling at the NHL's trade deadline. So with that in mind, here are, in my opinion, the Penguins' top realistic trade targets as we enter All-Star Weekend. We're going to start with the one that everybody has heard of already, that the Penguins have been tied to already by David Pagnota of the fourth period, and that's Ilya Labushkin, a right-handed defenseman from the Anaheim Ducks. He's currently on Chris Johnston's trade board of the Athletic. Then the Penguins, like I said, they have limited resources to expend this season, and Labushkin would fit under a player that could potentially fit the price that the Penguins are willing to pay. He would serve as the Penguins' third-pairing defenseman. In my opinion, it would be him on the right side and Johnny Ludwig on the left side because, well, John Ludwig has played both this season, but he's a left-handed shot defenseman. The Penguins organizationally do not have a lot of right-handed shot defensemen. You have Chris Letang, Eric Carlson, and Chad Ruedel at the NHL level. You look down to the AHL level, and it's Jack St. Ivany and Taylor Fadoon. That's it. So I could see the Penguins going after a right-handed defenseman, and you're going to sense a theme here as I go on, but Ilya Labushkin, excuse me, is a pending UFA with a manageable cap hit of only $2.75 million. Like I said, there's already been reported interest, and when Chris Johnston discusses Labushkin, this is what he has to say. Quote, a physical defenseman best suited for a third-pairing role. What you see is what you get from Labushkin. He'll kill penalties, finish checks, and try to keep the play in front of him. Let's brand it meat and potatoes hockey. 
There's a lot of people out there that have been clamoring for more meat and potatoes type defensemen. The Penguins in their own net front have had some issues over the years. Chad Ruedel is more physical than people give him credit for, but he's not great at clearing out the net front. P.O. Joseph, it is a wild ride watching him try to define, defend excuse me, the defensive goaltender's crease. Johnny Ludwig brings a little bit more of that grit, sandpaper. That's why he's endeared himself to the fan base. Labushkin seems like a very similar player in that aspect. Somebody that could be a one-two punch on that third pairing. Somebody that's going to make it, as Mike Sullivan likes to say, hard to play against the Penguins' bottom pairing. So I think Labushkin is certainly a name that I'm keeping my eye on as the trade deadline approaches, specifically because... There's already been, one, Chris Johnston putting him on a trade list, and two, David Pagnota saying that the Penguins have had prior interest this season. So keeping my eye on Labushkin in Southern California. Going over to another right-handed defenseman, my number two trade target for the Pittsburgh Penguins is Alexander Carrier. Right-handed defenseman, Nashville Predators. This one is on Mike, or not Mike, excuse me, Frank Saravalli's daily face-off trade board. He's a pending UFA with, again, a manageable $2.5 million cap hit. He currently sits 14th on Saravalli's trade targets list because he's another stay-at-home defenseman for the Penguins' right side. Like I said, you're going to sense the theme here. The poison pill with Alexander Carrier right now is he left Monday night's game for the Predators against the Ottawa Senators with an injury, and there has not been a single update as of now. He left early in the second period, didn't return for the remainder of the game, which is usually not a good sign, so obviously something to keep an eye on. But again, somebody else that could come in, bolster the Penguins' third pairing, and get a little bit better when it comes to solidifying the back end, making sure that the defensive side of the puck is taken care of. The Penguins, they do need scoring. Don't get me wrong, they do. But the price of some of these guys on the forward side of things, the price of some of these guys that fill the back of the net is going to be out of the Penguins price range. That's just the way I see it at this point. The best thing that they can do is to sure up the defensive side to help keep some of the pressure off of these goaltenders who have been ter terrific this season. Tristan Jari, Alex Nedeljkovic, they've been terrific. They could use a little bit more help from the blue line in particular. I think Alexander Carrier certainly brings that over from the Nashville Predators. Whether or not he gets traded also remains to be seen. They have Tyson Berry as well, who has not been playing a lot when Carrier is healthy. So it's a matter of where the Predators are at. They're in a similar position with the Pittsburgh Penguins, as in they're outside of a playoff spot, but they're very, very close to getting over the hump and sitting in playoff positioning. Third player that I'm going to put on this list, Matt Dumba. And a lot of people on either side of the aisle, there's going to be a lot of people that roll their eyes at the name Matt Dumba. There's going to a lot of pe be a lot of people, excuse me, they get very excited about the prospect of bringing in Matt Dumba. Right-handed defenseman, the defenseman of the Arizona Coyotes. He, too, is on Chris Johnston's trade board on the Athletic. A 29-year-old brings a heavy hand to the Penguins' back end. Again, Labushkin, Dumba. They bring a little bit more physicality, and I think that's something that a lot of people can watch the Penguins on the back end and say that could certainly help them. That could certainly help on the penalty kill as well. I mean, it's been a great penalty kill so far this year, but the one issue that they've had is defending those big bodies in front of the net. So maybe that's something that Matt Dumba can help with. It's certainly something that Ilya Labushkin could help with. Dumba, as well as a pending UFA, his cap hit... A little bit harder to make work, $3.9 million for the remainder of the season. Here's what Chris Johnson of The Athletic had to say about Dumba. Quote, he's playing nearly 20 minutes per game this season, which is probably a little too much, and is seeing significant usage on the penalty kill. Insulated on a deeper blue line, he could be an intriguing fit if the Coyotes aren't able to keep pace in the Western Conference's wild card race. The Penguins... Whoever they bring in, if it's a defenseman, is going to need to be able to kill penalties. Matt Dumba's been doing that all season. He's been overused in Arizona with 20 minutes a night. He's not going to need to play nearly that much with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So I think that he is also another target for the Pens if they're trying to add to their blue line, which in my opinion, that's where they would add if, if at all. Because right now, the question still remains, and as I have said it many, many times in this podcast already, will they even decide to add? I think if they're going to, one of Matt Dumba, Alexander Carrier, or Ilya Labushkin are probably the top three options 
on that list. Now, before I go, I do want to say there are other names that interest me that have been floated out there as potentially being available, whether that be from Frank Saravalli or Chris Johnston, the two individuals that I usually look to for trade targets list. Arthur Kaliev of the LA Kings, that name jumped out right away. I mean, a 22-year-old guy that has put up a 28 and 29 point season in his first two years. He scored goals this season despite being in and out of the lineup. He's a guy that interests me and intrigues me a lot. He would certainly bring a lot of offense to the Penguins' bottom six. He's a bigger body. He's only 22 years old. Certainly helps push the Pens into the future a little bit more. The one problem with Arthur Kaliev is he doesn't seem like a Mike Sullivan guy. The reason that he's having trouble staying in the lineup out there in LA is he doesn't play much defense. The winger is more so of a all gas, no breaks type of option. And I'm not exactly sure how much Mike Sullivan would be willing to bring a guy like that in, in particular for a bottom six that has been built from the defensive side out. So I do think Arthur Kaliev is an interesting option if he does end up truly being on the market this this trade deadline season, but I'm not exactly sure the fit is perfect for the Penguins. Another name that I've already mentioned kind of when throwing around some names, this is the first of what is going to be the list that I keep an eye on leading up until March 8th. Anthony Duclair still intrigues me. Brings that foot speed, brings a little bit of finishing ability into the bottom six, and brings a little bit of nastiness, a little bit of snarl, a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of a you know, prickish side that the Penguins need a little bit more of. I think Duclair would be a nice fit in the bottom six. And I talked earlier about some of these triggers that need to be pulled in the bottom six. A lot of them aren't going to hit. Maybe none of them hit. Riley Smith has struggled this season. When he returns, those struggles might continue and they might need to find a different suitor for Riley Smith. Matt Nieto might return. He might get an opportunity and that he might end up being a 13th forward. He might not be able to beat out a Jansen Harkins because he wasn't all that impressive to begin with this season. So we'll see what happens when Nieto returns and Sam Poulin, for as exciting as he has been at the AHL level, and this goes for Yessa Pugliarvi too, what does that game look like right now at the NHL level? Sam Poulin's only played three games at the NHL level. I'd love to see him get an opportunity. I do think he will get an opportunity, but does that end up panning out this season? Does he make his mark and stay once he gets that opportunity this season. That remains to be seen, and the same goes for Yesapul Yarvi, who has more NHL experience, but as I've talked about and mentioned multiple times, it's hard to come back from double hip surgery, and the speed of the game, we saw it with Jansen Harkins earlier this season. It took him a while to get used to the speed of the game at the NHL level. Can Yesapul Yarvi get back to that? So with those triggers left the pool, Anthony Duclair certainly is the first forward name that I think is a realistic option for the Pittsburgh Penguins. The last name I'll leave you with here is a name that I've made a video about about three weeks ago now, four weeks ago. Time is is flying by. I can't believe it's already the end of January. But a name that I put out there is the Penn's best option at the NHL trade deadline. And that's Jacob Chikrin. Left shot defenseman, can play the right side. He is a fit from a talent standpoint, the fit is there, the ability is there, he's younger, he plays a little bit more physical, he has that puck moving ability, but the price in any trade for him might be too rich. And he might not even be available. We've seen the Senators throw out there that obviously they have a couple of very expensive defensemen on the left side, a couple $8 million defensemen on the left side. And Jacob Chikrin is going to command a pretty hefty pay raise when this current contract ends. So the price to not just acquire him, but the price to extend him seems to be a little rich for the Penguins' blood at this point in time. Last season was the Pens' chance to get him, and they missed. They did. You can say what you will about Ron Hextall. I still believe if he would have been able to shed the assets fast enough that the Penguins... I mean, they were one of the top two or three teams in the chicken sweepstakes last year. It seemed like Mikhail Granlin was plan B. A bad plan B, but a plan B nonetheless. It seems like they might have missed the boat on the opportune time to bring him in because you bring in Jacob Chikrin last year, you probably don't sign Ryan Graves in the offseason. But that's revisionist history. They didn't get Chikrin. 
They brought in Graves, who has five years left on his contract at $4.5 million after this season. Going out and getting Chikrin on top of that just seems to be a little too much. Because you'd have three $4.5 million defensemen on the left side. Not to mention a $6 million defenseman on the right side and a $10 million defenseman on the second pair on the right side. It's too much money to put into the defense. I think that it's a great fit from a talent perspective, but I just don't think the timing has lined up for the Penguins on Chicken. That was last year, not this year. So the names that I'm keeping an eye on, Kaliev, Duclair, and Chikrin, but the big names, the names that I'm putting on my personal trade board, take it or leave it for what you will, Ilya Labushkin, Alexander Carrier, and Matt Dumba. Let me know who you think in the comments should be a target for the Penguins if they do indeed decide that they are going to go out and buy at the NHL's trade deadline coming up in just about five weeks. We have February and then the first week of March, and the deadline is here. Kyle Dubas has some decisions to make. We'll have to monitor what his decisions are. But as of right now, these are the names that intrigue me the most as potential trade targets for the Penguins. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Iceberg to Go. Remember, you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcast from by simply searching Tip of the Iceberg. We'll be back tomorrow with Jordan DeFigio of the Fly Penguins Fly podcast, a special interview episode of the Tip of the Iceberg. But for today... That's all. We'll see you guys next time.